Hi, Dumelang. Welcome back to my channel. Guys, I'm not in the best of spirits today. Ew. Today it is the, it is the 2nd of March. Is it the 2nd? Wait, let me just double check. No, it's the 3rd of March. I arrived here on the 1st of March. So from the 1st of March, today being the 3rd of March. So one, two, three, my first three days in China and just traveling from South Korea to China have just been an absolute mess. It's been one hurdle after another. My agent, estate agent's at the door. So let me just sort this out, I'll be back. Um, guys, as you can already tell by the start of this video, if you were to ask me, Anna, how was your move from South Korea to China? That first part of this video describes how it was for me. So if you are interested, I know some of you have been asking, Anna, how are you doing? How was the move? This video is for you. It was nothing against my school, nothing against South Korea, nothing against where I was staying, none of that. You guys already know the time that I had in South Korea was beyond words, it did so much for me. Um, where I was where I wanted to go in my life. And I will always be grateful for my time there. Throughout my time in South Korea, just seeing what the, you know, what offers were out there, China's offer was more than South Korea. I like to, we, you need to keep climbing the ladder, right? So with Epic, the salary ladder was, it was not moving but also because I loved what I was doing I wanted to advance in my career in teaching and I found that the ESL in South Korea um, didn't really provide me much room for that whereas from the videos that I've been watching of people in China I found that I could have more leg room to grow so financially career wise career development this is why we're here. Now you guys know why I left South Korea and came here to China. Awesome. The day I moved to China, I had a test that day. And I had, you know, sort of planned, so all my bags were packed. But then COVID in China. I know you need a PCR is when I realized I need a PCR test. So the morning of me having to leave, there I am, I'm searching, okay, PCR, when can I do it? Where can I do it? I found that I could do it at the airport. So I was like, great. Then looking at the details on doing your COVID test at the airport, they, you could do it at a certain time and then the test would be available two hours later. So I knew from where I was, I needed to go to the bus terminal. From the bus terminal, it would take me two hours to get to the airport. Then can I do my COVID test? And then I need to be ready to leave at 10 to seven. My flight was 10 to seven in the evening. So I thought to myself, Anna, you need to leave right now. It was 9 a.m. So I called myself a cacao taxi. Cacao taxi took me to the bus terminal in Ansong, which is the city that I was placed in. I get to the bus terminal and song and they tell me the bus that would take you to the Incheon airport is not here, is not coming. So I was like, okay, what are my choices? They said, take a bus to Yongin bus terminal, but that bus was only coming at 10.30. So for 30 minutes from 10 to 10.30, I'm now sitting waiting for the Yongin bus. So bus comes, it takes me to Yongin bus terminal and then there they tell me, okay, the Incheon bus is coming at 12. It was 10 to 12. 
There I am, go to the ticket office to pay for my ticket, give them my Korean card. They tell me, uh-uh, it's not working. Insufficient funds. I was like, damn it. I had transferred all of my money out of my Korean card into my South African card. So I was like, okay, F&B card, let's go. F&B card's not working. So I was like, okay, I saw some ATMs. Let me run to go find an ATM that will allow me to withdraw 14,000 Korean won, which is what I needed. First ATM, you can't withdraw with an international card. Second ATM, my FNB card is not working. Third ATM, my FNB card is not working. It's now two minutes before 12. I ran back to the ticket office. I'm trying to call Jessica. So the first time she didn't answer, now I'm trying to call her again because literally I have no other choice. Finally, she answers and I'm like, bro, do you have money? I need 14,000 Korean won. Please transfer it to my Korean account. She does so I'm able to pay. They tell me, ah, you missed the bus. But there's another one coming in 35 minutes. So at 12.35, there's another bus. I sit and I wait. Finally, that bus comes along. Now you must note, today's test day. Amongst all of those, I haven't written my test yet. So I'm like, okay, let me at least get on the bus at top 35. I get on, let me try and do my test. Connectivity issue. Wi-Fi is not working out very well. Even my data while I'm on the bus, it's not working. Okay? I'm like, and that's fine when you get to the airport. When I get to the airport, which is two hours, um, I'm then in a rush to get my PCR test, do my PCR test, Two hours later, the result is available. That was 5 p.m. my result is available. I am boarding my flight at 6.50s when we are flying. Okay. I see that there's a section to weigh my bags. So I weigh my bags and they are sitting at 30 kg. My check-in. My one check-in is at 30 kg. It needs to be 23 kgs. Even though I had weighed it when I was at home, I was like, I'm man. I think because I'm not weighing this properly, I'm sure it's within the limits. Boy, was I fooling myself. <laughs> I was fooling myself. But there I was at the airport unpacking my entire suitcase and throwing things away until that bag got to 23 kgs. Time to now go board our flight. I still haven't written my test. Anyway, I'm on my first flight. Takes me to um, the city where I've got my first layover in China. And it's an 11 hour layover. So I fly for one hour, land, 11 hour layover. So I'm like, okay, 11 hours, I've got time to do my test. Wi-Fi. So it keeps connecting, disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting. Finally, I'm like, Anna, you can't write your test in this environment because this test is online it's not gonna work okay so i'm like since i've got 11 hours labor i'm hungry let's go try and get food my visa card is not working in china not working at this airport that i met they tell me wechat pay any pay my wechat doesn't have a pay function and why would it? I don't even have a Chinese ID or a Chinese account, which is what you would need for WeChat to pay. Alipay is not something I had set up coming here. So I didn't even know where to start with that. No food. I then see if I can maybe stay at the hotels here. They've got two hotels at the airport. So I thought maybe the hotels seeing that imports are for international people would recognize the visa they do not because again i am in china things are done very different here so i can't book a place to stay so i'm like okay it's fine i'll stay at this airport so 11 hours i'm at the airport and i'm like okay anna you you need to try and do this test you cannot fail like i am one person who failing is not something that i aim to do especially if i can avoid it okay i am trying to write my test online and because now i get connected disconnected connect disconnect i have no choice i'm just like i know you'll be able to just get through it just do this thing of connecting disconnecting i get to question seven and it just stops connecting 
entirely i cannot get back in so i'm like seven out of 40 that's a fail so i am not happy anyway in the morning i board my next flight which will take me to hongzhou airport so i'm like i hongzhou airport i should be able to find the currency exchange office and i should be able to find a place to buy my sim card two things i could not find remember i don't have a chinese sim card so i couldn't connect to the wi-fi properly to use my um to use my uh language translation apps and i didn't have international roaming on either so i really shot myself in the foot when it comes to this so please learn from my mistakes um even though i was asking the people that worked at the airport they don't understand english and i don't understand chinese so they couldn't really help me um after various attempts of trying to figure this out on my own i saw starbucks sat down visa card worked at the starbucks so i feel like if it's an international company your visa card will work if it's chinese don't like don't even waste your time anyway starbucks i'm connected to the wi-fi and i get hold of my recruiter and i'm like babes this is not working i need help and um i don't easily ask for help like listen i try and figure myself figure things out myself i don't really like to rely on other people um and also don't like to inconvenience other people so i try and make sure that i figure things out on my own and if really there is no way of me getting this right then i ask for help so naturally that's what happened in the situation which is not always a good thing could have asked for help sooner could have arrived my city sooner but i didn't anyway my recruiter says i am one hour 30 minutes away from the airport um, stay there i will come and meet you one hour 30 minutes later she comes she meets me she books me a subway that will take me to my city in taojo and then while i'm there um she tells me where i need to go um she gives me the she already figured out on the app so she opened her train app and was able to find the bus that was going to where i was going the time the bus number all of it so she gives me all that detail so i can just show them that this is what i want when I get to the station, get to the station. And now it's like trying to figure out where is this ticket booth? Because again, English, Chinese, I'm on this side, Chinese is on this side and we are worlds apart and people don't really speak English. So I'm walking up and down to at least try and looking at all these different boards so I can see where it says ticket, ticket, ticket. Long story short, I find the train that I need to get on that will take me to my city. School meets me in my city in Taja, the area where they said they would meet me. And then take me to the hotel. So I stayed at the hotel for that first night. Next morning, um, the first thing is um, they take me to the bank so I can exchange currency. Um, the bank tells me they can't assist with a currency exchange over the counter because my card is international, it's Visa. They can't help me with that. So they said I can go to an ATM and withdraw an ATM. So I go to the ATM. The F&B card has an ATM international limit of, my card had an ATM international limit of 8,000 Rand. So I couldn't adjust that. So when I went to the ATM, it could only give me 3,000 RMB. And that was it. I, I cannot control the situation. So I had no choice but to go with it. So go with it. I meet my real estate agent that's going to be showing me around to find um, apartments. So we go looking. You guys saw what some of those places look like. And some of them, you can see that that dirt that I probably might not be able to get out because it's been there for so, 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 so many years. So it's like I do not have the energy to go be cleaning a place that looks like this. So majority of those first few options were already out because of the state that they were in plus also just was not my states it was just not something that i was looking to stay in and it's important for me to live in a place that i 
love that I can call home. Being abroad, you guys are probably thinking we go out every weekend and living our best lives. I don't do that every single day and every, I don't. So if I'm not at work, most of the time is spent at my home. So it's very important to me that it is a place that I love. So that meant there were three options. It was option eight, nine, and seven that I loved. These two cost 2,000 RMB. My school gives me a housing allowance of 2,000 RMB. This one, option seven, which you all loved and so did I, it costs 3,600 RMB. So I was like, oh Lord, this is out of the budget. So I said to my agent, of these three, which is the closest one to my school? He says seven. I said, oh Lord, what are you doing to me? Because I want a place that is close to school where I am in walking distance. I don't want to be having to get on public transport to get to school, be paying monthly on transport. I just want to be able to walk a few minutes, I'm at my school. So option seven was giving me that. So now it was a matter of budget wise. Do I go for it or not? Anyways, we go back to the agent's office and we're sitting there and obviously I say, okay, I like seven. I think that's the one I'm gonna go with. The landlord is there now also. And she says to me, okay, for you, I'll make it 3,300 RMB. So the price comes down. And I'm like, Lord, look at you. Proximity, <coughs> negotiated price. And I love it. Um, and then also another thing is last year, I had a vision board. I had a couple of things that I wanted to achieve for 2023. So my 2022 vision board, I had a flag of China because I said I wanted to teach English in China. Um, it was also more detailed where I wrote um, the salary, my contract, what all of that looked like, what the year would be like. I had already manifested what type of year I'm going to have in China on my vision board. I also had a picture of a graduation because I said I want to study. I also had the picture of where I would be living. After seven, my vision board. This is what it's looking like. So I was just like, Lord, it's like everything is just aligning. Like, I know what more do you need? Right there in that moment, the price is coming down and you were worried about the price. You wanted to be in close proximity, you got it. You wanted it to be a home that you love, it is exactly what is on your vision board. What more do you need from me to show you that this is where you need to be? Um, is what God was saying. Uh, anyways, long story short, I decided, yes, this is the place that I want. They tell me, we want four months rent deposit. Four months comes to just about 30,000 rand and they want it in cash. Plus also there's the um, agent fee, which was just under 2,000 on me. So I withdrew 3,000 at the ATM. I'm able to give them that 3,000 RMB right then and there with the promise that tomorrow I'll go to the banks and try and get more for you. Tomorrow being the 3rd of March. Okay, so next day, it is the 3rd of March. Um, the head of my department at my school, who's the one who's been driving me around and going with me to the various places, um, on the 2nd of March now tells me that she is busy today, she's got meetings, she's also got a class that she needs to teach, so she can't help me get around today, help me with what I need to do today. But she says, here's what I need you to go do today. Today I need you to head to the Taoja Health Center, go and get your medical results, the ones that we did the other day, previous day, the 2nd. And I need you to go to the hospital and do another medical check, a full medical check, which you need to get done and give to the school because the school also wants a medical check to show that you're all in the clear before you can start school. And she sends me the address. So those are the two things that I need to do, these medical checks. And obviously I have to pay for my apartment. Chapel, I wake up on the 3rd of March and I'm like, okay, let's go do our medical test at the hospital first. I use this navigation app that they use here, Baidu or Badu, I don't know what they call it. But anyway, I use that app. You can see the bus routes, the different transport routes, um, taxi, walking, just being able to navigate. This is the app that they use. It reminds me of Neighbor, uh, but it's on another level. So yeah, try to use this app to call myself a taxi because 
this teacher told me you can use this app to call a taxi and to navigate. Shapo, I do that, but when I try to call a taxi, it wants me to either pay via WeChat Pay or Alipay, or with a Chinese card, which I don't have. So then I'm like, wait, people keep saying they use Didi, 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 Didi. Then we go on Apple Store and try download Didi. I try to download it, I get the error that it's not available in your country. Obviously, it's picking up that I'm from South Africa. So I can't download Didi and use Didi like everybody says I must do. So Didi's not working. So I'm like, Didi's not working. Uh, there's no way of me using a bus or a subway. Like, I'm not set up to use those things yet. Chinese card, dololo. Um, or ID, dololo, because I still haven't applied for my work permit yet, my residence permit. Okay. Anna, what are your options? Okay. So I, I see where the hospital is. It's one hour and 30 minutes away. I'm like, she's <sighs> they, they don't speak English. I don't speak Chinese. Thank goodness I have a SIM card. I've got data. I can use my translation apps. Tell them what I'm there for. They direct me to which floor I need to get to. I get to that floor and there's different rooms that I've got to go to in order to get the tests that are required of me. Now... Me English, then Chinese, so it just took forever to find where I'm supposed to go and all of this is on my own. But it's fine, we figure it out, we get the test done. I walk one hour, 30 minutes back to my apartment, option seven. <laughs> and I get back home and I'm like, oh shit, I need to pay this landlord. They're coming to get the rest of their money. I need to go walk to the ATM. So whip out the navigation app, see the closest ATM to me, go there to see if they're able to give me more currency with my card. They say, nope, but you can go to the ATM. I withdraw another 3,000 RMB. And then walk back home. And I get another call from the teacher at my school. She says to me, Anna, don't forget to go and fetch your test results at the Talja Health Center. Guys, I have to walk there, and it's also an hour walk. So at that time, when I realized that that's when I was bawling, I was crying in that video, as you see, because emotionally, physically, I had enough. Guys, physically, I was tired. I haven't, I didn't get proper sleep for the past three days between packing and leaving South Korea, layovers at the airports where I couldn't get a hotel, you know. So I haven't had good sleep. So there's that, all the walking around, I'm tired. And now also having an issue with my card, not being able to pay for things when I want something or need something because I have an international visa card and not a Chinese card. And I don't have WeChat Pay or Alipay set up. So it's just been a struggle to do things here in China. Then on top of that, I can't get hold of family back home to just like recharge and connect because the VPN that I've signed up with is not working. So there's that too. Then because of the network issues I was having, I failed my very first two tests for my PGCE. So emotionally, oh guys, I had enough when I was crying on in the beginning of this video. Like I couldn't. I was like, Lord, why is this so difficult? Why is it so difficult? I didn't think it would be so difficult. When I went to Korea, I had all my ducks in a row. I had a plan. I knew exactly what's going to happen when I get there. And also Epic, they sort of help you. You've got an orientation. You've got a co-teacher who goes with you to all of these places. In China, I had to do all of that on my own. So, yeah, I had enough emotionally and physically, honestly. Then landlord comes to get their money. I withdrew another 3,000 RMB so I could give them that and told them, listen, this card, I cannot withdraw more. I can only withdraw 3,000 RMB every day. And that's another thing that just got me so frustrated and annoyed with everything is I don't like to be in a position where I owe people money. If you ever lend me money, you must know you'll get it right then and there when I said I was going to give it to you or sooner. You'll get your money. I really lend money from people. I don't like to be in that situation. I feel like when you're lending, especially friends, like don't play that game. It ruins relationships, especially when someone does not pay back. Don't play with that. Anyway, so I didn't like to be in a position where I owed people money and I had the money. I just couldn't pay it because I didn't have 
the Chinese currency and have all of these other apps to be able to pay them via WeChat or Alipay, which is what they wanted. And they didn't have the option where I can do an electronic EFT to them. So there was so much that was out of my control when I initially arrived here in China that made my life difficult. From VPN that wasn't working, internet restrictions, from Visa card not working in stores, I can't pay for things or buy things. Um, can't call myself taxis to get around. It's, it's just, it was horrible those four, three days. That is what I was going through, trying to navigate all of this on my own. Sometimes it can be this difficult. Sometimes you're gonna go through what I went through, or maybe you'll be lucky and you don't go through what I went through. But I wanted to share this with you guys so you can learn from the mistakes that I made. Maybe there's parts where you can pick up, ah, Anna, if you did this, you would have been fine. So please, if you have learned anything from what I've said in this video, great. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video if you got to here. I'm sorry if you find that it was all over the place, but just to answer those of you who are saying, Anna, what was your experience like first moving to China? How are you doing? That's how I was doing the first three days. But now I'm doing so much better. We've figured a lot of things out. Um, you know, I'm just now trying to get into a routine, into a rhythm here in China. But thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you guys so much.